Hey, everybody. Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. I recently put up a video on, um, was it Instagram, Twitter? It was one of them. I don't know. But it was basically just some old footage of one of my boys. And I decided to take the uh, drone footage that he was playing with and make it into like a little energy ball. And instead of him flying around a drone, I decided to make that drone into an energy ball that flies around remote control. Pretty simple effect, pretty easy to do inside of After Effects. Just takes a little bit of patience and it takes quite a bit of horsepower from your laptop or your computer. So let's go ahead and get started with this and um, walk you through this here tutorial. If you're new to After Effects, some of this stuff is not going to make any sense to you. So I highly recommend watching my After Effects for Beginners tutorial and catch up on that because some of the terms that I'm going to use in this video um, are reflected in that beginner tutorial. So go back and watch that one. I'll put a little card up here on the screen or something like that. Okay. Now let's get into After Effects. All right. So first thing you need to do is create a brand new composition inside of After Effects. So we'll just click there and I'll call this, uh, let's say we'll start with energy ball because this is going to be a bit of a two-parter, if I could spell. All right, and we're going to do this in HD 1080p. Um, could do it in 4K, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to use 1080p because it'll be a lot easier on the computer at hand. All right, and then I highly recommend doing, you know, up to 60 frames a second because it'll look a lot smoother because this is a graphic animation, if you will. Leave the background color black for now. Typically, you can change that to whatever you want, but let's leave it black for now. Click OK. All right, so now we need to create new solids, and you can do so just by right-clicking down here and just say New Solid. And we'll call this solid Ball. And then we'll keep it at 1080p as usual, square pixels. Same uh, color, black ground. Uh, black is fine for this one this time. And then we'll click OK. So now we have that created. And what's going to make this effect really sort of get started is you have to create noise in it. So we're going to go over to our effects panel. Uh, actually, it's called effects and presets. And every time I click on that, it takes half a second. But in the effects panel, just search for fractal noise. Let's see. And there you go. And then you just drag that down onto the ball solid, just like so. All right. So now we're getting somewhere. This sort of looks like a bunch of gas or, or an orb, if you will, except it's flat. But before we do more, we're going to make some adjustments to it. Let's increase the contrast. If you look inside the uh, effect control panel, let's increase the contrast a little bit to make it a little bit more defined actually a lot more defined, something like that. You can push the brightness up a little, but not too much. Okay, something like that will work just to get started. Next, go back to your effects and presets panel, and we wanna make this a, a ball. So we need to type in spear. Is that how you say that word, spear? Something like that. All right, so click on the CC sphere and drag it down to the solid as well. Okay. So it automatically turned that into a ball. Now notice the CC fear, CC spear, um, effect here in the effects and controls panel. You're going to have a lot of different controls here. Uh, you can change the radius, make it bigger, smaller, and we'll get into that more in a minute. Uh, the light right here. If you change the direction of the light, you get a whole different look. So watch what happens to the little spear as I move the light around. You know, and you can do what you want with that. I'm going to keep it right about here for now, something like that. You can even change the light color. Uh, I won't dive into changing the light color just yet because there's another step to do. Okay, so now we have our energy ball, if you will. Not quite, but this energy ball is going to require at least two more duplicate copies of it to really make this work. So to do that, you go back down to your uh, media and your layers here, layer panel. You want to duplicate that layer. And to do that in After Effects, unlike Photoshop, 
it is control D, not control J. So control D or command on a Mac. We'll do that twice. Okay. Now let's rename these so we can, you know, see, see where we are and keep a little bit more organized. So I'm going to rename this layer. And to rename them, you just click enter on the layer. And I'm going to call this one ball two. And we'll call this one ball three. Now, if you're looking over here at your uh, uh, map, uh, project monitor, it, you, you don't see more than one ball on the screen, but we can fix that. And what we'll do is just make one bigger and one a little bit smaller and one a little bit smaller than that one. So you'll see three different sizes. OK, so we'll take the, the top one, ball three, and we're going to scale it up. So click on the ball three layer, click S on the keyboard for scale. And scale it up a little bit, something like that. Okay. And now turn that layer off for the moment. And we'll do the same thing for ball two. Scale it up just a touch like that. All right. So now we'll turn off the scale panel there. So just hit S again and that turns it off on those layers. Okay. Got it. Okay, so after you've scaled them up, change the blend modes on these, just like you would in Photoshop. Change them to screen. There we go. So now you see that there's two, three different sizes here, if you look a little bit closer. But that's okay. We're going to fix all of that. So now we have uh, three different sizes. So let's change the color. Remember we talked about the light could have a different color. So let's give it a, a bit of a different color. So we'll go to the light change the color to say, I don't know, let's go with like a yellowish greenish, something like that. Click OK. And then go to ball two. Uh, let's say bluish, tealish, something like that. That'll work. OK. Now it sort of looks like a planet, doesn't it? And now we'll do the same thing for ball three. And now we'll do the same thing for ball three, but it doesn't look like ball three is turned on. So make sure we turn that on for the moment. And we'll go back to the light, change that color to something, I don't know, maybe like a reddish. I don't know. Let's really just try to make it stand out as best we can. See, the yellow is a bit much. I like that orange. Y'all like the orange? We'll go with orange for now. Something like that and click OK. So now you see there's three different balls and three different uh, light sources, three different light colors. Great. So we have an, an, an orb that's already created. Now, if we were to hit play on the keyboard, um, you know, nothing really happens. It's just there. OK, so let's give this some life. But I forgot a step in here. We don't really need this to be a super long composition. So let's go back to our composition settings. So you go to composition menu, composition settings, change the duration. We don't need it to be 22 seconds. That's my bad. Let's make this say, uh, I don't know. Let's go 15 seconds, something like that and click OK. All right. So now we have a shorter composition. But again, if we hit play or spacebar on the keyboard, nothing really happens. The orb is just sort of sitting there. So. Why not give this a pretty cool rotation, if you will? All right. So if you see, we have the uh, rotation option here. Let's go ahead and turn on the animation options for all of the rotations and just click on the little stopwatches like so. And to keep it simple, we'll scroll all the way down to say near the very end, like 12 seconds, something like that. And then we'll change the rotation amount to two. That should be plenty, right? Change this one to one if we want to. Change this one to four if we want to. Okay. So now what we should have is a keyframe set at 12 seconds. And then when we go back to the very beginning, it should have reset. Okay. So you notice everything went back to zero. So if I hit play for ball one, I'm going to turn off these other layers so you can see it a little bit better. If you hit play for ball one, it starts to rotate. So let's do the same thing with the other two. So we'll click on ball two in that layer, go to the sphere.
Okay. And we play it back. Everything is sort of moving around and looking extra funky. Great. All right, so we got that done. Now we need to take this orb that we've created and make it available um, for the video to actually use it. So the easiest step to do is to make this what's called a pre-comp or pre-composition. And to do that, you highlight all of your layers, you right click, and you select pre-compose. Okay, and we'll just call this um, pre-comp ball, or we'll just say orb. <laughs> this ball sounds a little graphic, and then we'll click OK. All right, so now all of those layers have been meshed down into one layer in particular. And everything is, um, you know, it's all independent like that. It's just one thing. And if I need to go back and make changes to one of those different layers in there, I can do that just by double clicking this pre comp and it'll open it up and let me go back in and um, edit different layers if I need to. Or even if I want to add one, I can. OK, it's very similar to smart objects inside of Photoshop. All right. So let's go back over here to our um, project panel here and let's start bringing in some video footage energy ball demo there it is all right so now we got our footage and we'll drag that down into our energy ball composition just like so so we have the energy ball sitting here on top of the video of course that looks horrible it's way too big it's in the way there's no real deal effect to it but we're gonna fix that uh, we'll come back to that here momentarily so first we're gonna hide that pre-composition or that energy ball just by turning off the layer. What matters here and what's going to make this effect really work is the motion tracking. We need to be able to track the motion of this little toy drone and we're going to attach that energy ball to that toy drone. Okay. So you go to a nice spot in your footage. Uh, we'll say right about here. Right about there, just as he's picking it up. Okay. All right, so now we need to create what's called a null object. A null object is pretty much just a placeholder inside of the video. You can't see it once it's, a, once it's in playback, but it's something that's behind the scenes that you, you can use for motion graphics. So we moved our playhead to where we need it to be. We're going to right click and say new null object, and it's going to create a new layer. But let's move that up to the top layer. Okay, cool. All right, and now you see on the screen, we have this red little square, and that's that's our null object. When you play it back, you'll never see it, trust me. Okay, so we got this squared away on the timeline. We need to go to our tracker panel, and we say source. We want the source to be the demo footage, like so, and that's gonna open a new tab up here at the top so we can actually start our tracking procedure, okay? And then I like to zoom in a little bit because this is a small object. You zoom in by pressing control or command plus symbol on your keyboard and minus lets you zoom out. So we zoomed in on that. Make sure you have your demo layer selected and that way your tracking panel will have everything activated there. Okay. All right. So now track motion. And it gives us this brand new little tracking point here. Now, this is going to be a little bit tough because it's so small. So zoom in as much as you can. And then you want to adjust the size of this thing. So make that a little bit bigger. And the center part is the target part of the uh, tracker. And this is the edge feather, if you will, as far as uh, sensitivity. And the key with tracking is the more contrast you have on the scene, the faster the motion tracker will work as um, far as trying to figure out where things are going. So I'm going to put it right on top of this little drone, and I'm just going to hit this play button here to say analyze forward. And it's going to think. But of course, nothing happened. Okay, so we need to go back because there's not a lot of data or contrast on this particular scene. So we're going to have to do a little bit manually. So we'll move forward, move forward, and you can just drag it up like so. 
And you just keep dragging it up. And eventually you'll get to a point where the tracker will see a lot more contrast and it will do all of this for you automatically. So just drag it up till you find a good contrasting point. Okay, so now you see it's starting to track it a little bit better by itself. Let's get in there. We'll still try to assist it some. Okay, and I had a hunch it was going to mess up a little bit there, so I stopped it before he tossed it. Yep, it did, so I'm going to go back. And we'll say edit target. And we want our target to be the layer null one. That's our null object. Hit OK. And then you hit apply. And you want to apply X and Y and click OK. All right. So now you see there's some keyframes here at the bottom where it was doing all of the tracking. And you notice the null object has moved from down here to over there to where the drone is. OK. So now let's play around with getting that sphere to work with this here. So let's go ahead and turn on that sphere layer and pre-compose again. And we can scale that down a little bit. So let's hit S on the keyboard. And we're going to scale it down to where it fits a little bit better. We'll put it back next to the drone maybe to give us a little bit more feel. Yeah, so let's scale it down a little bit more. Something like that. And we'll move it closer to where the drone is. Scale it down a little more. Let's move it a little bit closer. Something like that. So that's where it's going to start from. All right. Now, the null object is going to do all of the tracking. But what we're going to do is what they call parenting. And we're going to parent this sphere to the null object. And to do so, you click on this little pickwick here or pick whip and you just drag to the null object. And that's basically saying we want to parent to the pick whip and click, just click and drag and let go. So now wherever the null object goes, this layer, the sphere is going to go. All right. So if we were to just track forward, you see the sphere starts to move like that because it has the motion tracking in with it. Now, granted, we stopped it a little bit right about there. So I could just trim all of this footage back, which is what I'm going to do just for the sake of this video, keeping it short. There we go. All right. So now we got that square. It's tracking. It's a spear. It's rotating, but it still looks a little bit wonky. So let's give our spear some special effects. So we're going over to the effects panel and we'll type in glow and drag glow to that layer like that and then you can mess then you can just mess around with the glow intensity in your effects panel you can change the color change the radius of the glow and see i'm not digging this shadow that's showing up on the back side of this this um sphere so that tells me there's something that needs to be adjusted inside the um pre-comp so i'm just going to double click on the pre-comp go back in here and see if we can play around with the lighting effects. Okay, so now when I go back to the pre-comp, it looks a little bit better. It still has that black edge. Eh, we'll fix this. Change this to screen as well. Or we can make it soft light. Because sometimes soft light looks good, depending on your scene. And in this, in this case, screen looks better. Screen or lighten. Let's try, you know, we'll stick for, with lighting for now. All right, so now if we click play forward, it should look like it's a little glowing ball moving right along with him. And that's it. And of course, you'd have to render all of this out before you export it. So just go to your preview panel, hit play, and After Effects will think through 
All right. So that is it on this one here, folks. Now, again, you can make changes to this little energy ball. Uh, you can change the color. You can go in and hit the Lumetri color panel on it and just make some adjustments to highlights and contrast and all of that stuff. But the basis I wanted to show you is just to get it created. And the key, in my opinion, is giving it just enough glow and giving it just enough rotation. That way it doesn't just look like a a ball, if you will, a flat sort of circle, if you will. Having that rotation gives you that depth and gives you just a little bit of more uh, mystical sci-fi view, if you will. Thanks for all of the support. Uh, check out all the other videos here in the channel. Make sure you subscribe if you're interested in more tutorials like this. I'll try to do things like this a little more often than I have been. Sorry about that. But um, till then, I'll catch you all on the next video. Create and dominate.